what I see it from. Give us a test. Testing. Can you hear uh, Michelle okay? Yeah. All right. Hello, everybody. And thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I think you should be able to see. Should I move it or do you want to move your camera? This is um, a value sketch. No Maybe if, we'll if you if you yeah. adjust that, everything else will be straight too. Swivel it around or something. Anyway, it's okay. So. Um, I love to sit at the beach and paint. I've been doing that for probably uh, more than 30 years. Um, and this is a, a value sketch that I made of a spot in Delaware. I love to sit on the beach and paint in Delaware. Um, unfortunately, I don't see many people besides me who paint there, but this is going to be my subject matter today. So it's a great idea to start a painting with a value sketch. Ed Whitney, who I studied with a long time ago, always called this the trip tick, that you shouldn't do a painting unless you have a value sketch. So this is my trip tick. Uh, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna move it. That, that'll mess you up a little. And I, I make sure that I have um, already established my middle tones, my darks, and my lights. And I, I have in mind um, a sort of color dominance that I'll use warm colors, yellows, and maybe some browns and purples. So I can start drawing that. And I have my paper also divided into four on my sketch, so that gives me a little better idea of what I'm doing when I enlarge everything. And all the pencil lines can be erased afterwards, so I'm not at all worried about that. Kind of pencil this is a carpenter's pencil. It's probably about a, a 2B, but I mean the main thing is that it, it's wide and it forces you to sort of simplify your, your shapes and not, not get into going like this right away because I don't think you accomplish much um, doing detailed work immediately. So I see this. See that okay? Yeah. Is that pencil line dark enough? Yeah. And this is a, a value sketch of a subject matter that I've done a lot. I mean, I, I have done paintings from this value sketch. So you could approach it a lot of different ways. I use Arches um, 140 pound cold press. I'm sorry, hot press. I used that paper for a long time. I like um, the subtleties that it allows you to see the little granulations of the, of the paint. And you know what? If it does, doesn't turn out exactly the same proportions as my value sketch, it doesn't matter. The main thing is uh, <coughs> that you show shapes and uh, values because, of course, you can't see um, a, a medium shape value against another medium shape. You have to be able to see it against something different, like a like a dark shape or a light shape, and that's that's how I've been taught. Um, you know, to paint with three values, medium, light, and dark. And with watercolor painting, um, the white of the paper is the beautiful thing to, to show through also. Okay. Just a little dormer here.
how does that uh, vertical and horizontal line come into the vertical and horizontal. Are you, you mean, avoiding something or keeping something in? This, it, it's, um, I, I'm not sure if you saw it or not, but this was my value sketch. So when I look at the value sketch, it makes it a little easier to transcribe the small subject matter to the large paper if I can have an idea what the quarters of the paper were. That's, that's why I drew. It's not a matter of putting things in or leaving them out. No, not at all, not at all. This is sort of looking down uh, from Fenwick Island down to Ocean City, which is probably uh, 10 miles down the road. So, so the houses get smaller. This is the one the most in the distance, so it's small. And it's really just a suggestion now of uh, buildings down there. And I have a couple figures here, which, you know, I didn't sit there and see these figures. I just sort of had them in my mind, so I'll add them because it makes it a little more interesting if you have some people. Okay. If you're running out of space on the signing, you use the back. Would you normally use as prominent a line if you were painting for pleasure, or are you exaggerating for a benefit? I think I'm making it a little bit darker because I want to make sure you're able to see it. But I, I think you can see it okay, right? Absolutely. Okay, good. Yeah, Pam asked me specifically, make sure I have a dark enough line. And uh, here's my horizon. You know, now the horizon, I think a, a main thing, an important thing is not to have the horizon in the middle of the paper. Like if I had the edge of the ocean all the way up here, that sort of divides it into half and that's monotonous space division. It's much better to have a small, like 20% like would be your land and then 80% is your water. I just think it's, it's more interesting visually to look at it that way. So that was my original thought. I always try to think about shapes and design when I work. And uh, I, I always remember Ed Whitney, he said, uh, a good shape is two different dimensions, oblique and interlocking. And I'm, I'm uh, planning this piece of paper so that I have some of that going on. Could you say that again? A good shape is two different dimensions, oblique and interlocking. So you see here on my drawing, um, I think my sky is a good shape because it's higher, it's bigger here on the left hand side, then it gets smaller on the right hand side. So that I, I believe is a good shape. Same thing as this one on the bottom, the beach. We have interlocking going on here. We have interlocking going on here. These shapes are interlocking with each other. Uh, there's a lot of angles in this painting, so that's sort of a, a dominant thing, and I hope I can get a color dominance going on too. And 
and the beats not, might not look exactly like this, but you, uh, you simplify, you make a, a suggestion of um, the beach. It doesn't have to be like a photograph. And, and I know there's a lot of um, posts on the beach, railings, uh, sand, fence, and all that. And I have some of that suggested here, but I'm purposely trying to not make it all equally spaced because it's just more interesting if you if you have maybe two and then one and their their spacing is different rather than making it all the same. And so there's another uh, Ed Whitney thing that I'm, I'm thinking. He used to say the fatal futility of fact. It's very boring if you just make things exactly the way they are. figures in here and uh, different size shapes I think I had different size shapes with the buildings uh, trying to make this this figure so he doesn't stand straight up and down so he's sort of leaning a little bit because it's more interesting to look at that way and it's completely out of my imagination. It's, there's nothing factual about seeing this figure on the beach. And if you practice doing little figures, you just, I think, get more confident with it. And then I'll put a, another smaller figure because it gives me different sizes. Bending over, it's more interesting than if he's standing straight up. Okay. So I have some interlocking going on here, one shape going into the other. I have some beach grass here. And thinking about that shape not being square, but being two different dimensions. And it sort of could start down here and end up higher. Uh, and I'll have some suggestions of. And these, these posts don't all have to be standing straight up because that's sort of boring. They could be leaning different directions, different sizes. You might have a little bit of rocks here. Okay, so I uh, have my palette here. I wet my paints a little bit, but I'm going to do this as a flat wash painting, layered. And I, I use uh, two inch brushes for a lot of the beginning washes. So I'm, I'm going to mix up what I call... I just want to get rid of that damn banner up there. Where's the word display? There we go. Okay. I call this the mother wash because I, I make a wash with one color or, you know, a few colors, but my wash that I'm going to put over a lot of the painting, then I, I sometimes add other colors to it so that I can get a, a variation, but yet it's still part of the same family. So this is um, quinacridone gold that I'm using. And I'm adding a little blue to it because I want it to be a dark enough value. And hopefully I can just get this with one wash, the kind of value that I want. because watercolor always dries lighter than when you put it down. Which blue are you? This is a little bit of a, this is cobalt blue. It's, it's pretty rare that I use colors straight out of the tube because they just seem to be garish or, or just too bright.
And you could always test it. You know, I can test it here. I think that's probably going to be dark enough. So I'm going to run a wash. And uh, the main thing about running a wash, you got to do it quickly. So that's where the big brush comes in handy. But you have to sort of keep a, a bead of uh, the, the wash so that it doesn't create a line. You'll see. Okay, and I can, I can really include my, my dark value of my water there too because I'm going to go back and, and darken that eventually anyway. So, so you erase those lines you don't Eventually. When, when everything's all dry, I can erase them. But I'm not, not going to do it now. And uh, here's a brush that I, I like a lot. This is a synthetic brush, by the way. This is a two inch wide synthetic brush. And uh, this is a squirrel brush, which I, I like a lot more. It's, it's, it's softer. Okay, so. And if you keep it, keep the paper at an angle, that's what causes the paint to run also. Is this the sky you're doing right now? Yep. Like I said, I'm trying to get um, sort of a yellowish kind of a scheme going on. And that paper is not stretched or anything? No, nope. I just use... Um, why isn't it buckled? Why isn't it buckled? Because... Why isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I, it never really gives me a problem. If you put the wash on there quickly enough, see, I, I have my big wash on now. See, and it's, you know, fairly, fairly uh, even. So I can even... And this is hot press, you said? Yeah, this is 140 pound hot press. And so it doesn't curl on you? No, uh-uh. I have the painting, I, I use a masonite board. I mean, you could work wet if you wanted, and I do that sometimes, but I'm not going to do it right now. And I also have, I have a couple places that sort of, you know, dripped here. I can, I can get that white back, though. It's no big deal. If, if you get a, a dribble or a drool someplace, it doesn't matter. Do you ever do wet on wet on yep. paper? Yes, I do. Sometimes do wet and wet. Uh huh. Yep. Um, we're having trouble with your using hot press because I'm afraid of it. Don't be afraid. <laughs> just, just buy more paper. That's all. Okay. So now, what I talked about uh, this this was going to be my mother wash. So that's one color. So if I add to that, I should be able to get a medium value or at least something different for the color of the beach. And I'm thinking the sort of. Um, maybe a greener kind of color. So that it looks different from the sky. Okay, but I still, this is still medium value. So I'm gonna. So what color did you add here? I added uh, cobalt blue and a little bit of um, manganese blue, I think that is. Here's my figure. I'll save a little space for him. And I mean, if you work quickly, you don't really have the problem with the, the paper, the paper buckling like it could. You just got to know what you want to do. Plan it ahead, as I said, and you can get right in there and uh, accomplish what you want pretty quick. So that's my second main wash. And you gotta think big shapes. I have a, a house in there. I'm thinking that I'll make a sort of a brownish, a little browner color. And my, my paint's not gonna run 
really on this paper because I'm painting on dry paper now. If you are painting wet on wet, of course, then you have to remember not to touch one wash into another. So. You're going to be able to erase those lines. Yep. How can you do that? Yeah. <laughs> You'll see. I'm going to make this a little darker. How did you get it brown? I added, uh, I think that's a raw umber. And I have, remember now I have some white uh, down here. I have a white shape that's going to come here and then go up into here. And I'm going to try to tone this white down so that I don't have whites at the edge of the paper. And I, this is pretty dry now actually, so I should be able to put my color in for the water. And that's going to be one of my dark shapes too. I think you can get some idea already where my medium value is, my light shapes, some of my darks. I've got a, a roof here that I also have as one of my dark shapes. I can put that in. Dark, so I don't want to keep everything in the same color though, so I'm going to try to get some variation, uh, something a little warmer. So see, if I add, I can take some, this is, I mean, the exact color isn't so important. I see that it's a rose color, uh, matter rose, permanent rose. So I'm going to add a little bit of that, but you could use alizarin crimson, you could use any kind of red. The main thing is to have some different color than, than these other ones are. Okay, so I'm gonna have this. There's a little color. And then I have a When you have um, a puddle of paint, a good thing to do is take a, take a dry, you know, you can get the water out of the brush this way, take a dry natural hair brush. The synthetic brushes don't pick up so well and sort of absorb it that way so that it doesn't run. I have a couple of runs here. Sometimes it, it uh, dries a little darker and then you have a more interesting edge, which is good. shapes.
I said that I was going to try to get some a little bit of purple going on in here because it sort of contrasts nicely with the green. have something a little different than that. I want to add a wash on this um, the side of this house. I'm not sure that that's really dry, so I'll use my hair dryer. I see a big puddle here that could run all over, so I'll pick that up a little bit. sort of relates to the gold in the sky and I did use my my mother wash some of that to come up with this and this could be a little a post coming up I've got a dark side of this building here. Maybe I'll make that something more colorful. I use, um, I mean, the brushes that I pretty much use are here. I have the, the two inch brushes. One is a squirrel brush, which is, is really great. And I've had this for at least 10 years. Uh, all my brushes are pretty old. They don't really seem to wear out. So I have this two inch squirrel hair brush. It's an Isavi made in France. And then I have the two inch, this is a Robert Simmons brush, a synthetic brush. This is a Grumbacher one inch wide brush. I think this is a natural hair brush and actually this brush is probably at least 30 years old and it's in perfect shape. I probably paid about ten dollars for it. So I don't think I could buy it now for ten dollars. And then I have, a, I have a, I think this is about a half inch wide, a sable brush. That's a Robert Simmons. It's a flat brush. Pretty much my brushes are, are flat, those that I use the most. 
and then I have some smaller brushes. I have a, a rigger. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what number that is. Probably about a six. That's a synthetic brush. Robert Simmons, I think. This is a, a web liner that I got from Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. I think that's a number eight. And that comes to a, a flat, flat shape on the end. And then this is a, a rigger brush. This is a natural hair brush. And actually, I got this. I bought this brush from Ed Whitney when he was having his Saturday classes that I used to go to. And he sold uh, paint and you know brushes and paper and stuff. So I've had that for a long time. The first time I went to Ed Whitney's class in Long Island, I, I went up to him and I said, Mr. Whitney, do you know that you're four times my age? Because I was 22 and he was 88. So, and, but I, I really learned so much from him. He taught thousands of people, so, uh, and he also taught Frank Webb. So, yes, he taught Frank Webb. He taught Marge Soroka. Marge Soroka was a great painter. She used to be in our Saturday classes there in uh, Douglaston. I want to, but I always use the largest brush that I can. I mean, it's just, just smarter to, to accomplish more with less if you can do that. Just putting a suggestion of that building in the distance here. And I've tried to make it a little more interesting by making it bigger on the left and smaller as you go to the right. I have some drips going on here. I have a couple of chimneys. say that the chimneys are really going to be this large, but there's nothing wrong with changing the proportion a little bit. I have a chimney up here too. Ed Whitney used to also say, um, a painting is sort of like a golf game. The, the fewer strokes you make, the better. You know, just, just decide what you want to say and, and get it down on the paper as quickly as you can. I meant to uh, keep this roof a little bit lighter up here. Or animals or something, would you still use the same brush? Yeah. Okay, so there's that. Let's see if I can get these figures in here. Pretty much the same. I, I mean, I've used both.
kinds of paper. It's just that I like the hot press because you can see the subtleties of the washes better. That's, that's what I like about it. Does it have a rougher surface? No, it's smooth. No. The hot smooth. press is, is a lot smoother. I, I have some there. You can, you can look at it after if you want. I have used hot press paper for a long time. I, I would have a hard time finding a, a, a painting that was done on anything different of mine. There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, people use different kinds of paper. But I always, uh, you know, for the last 20, 25 years, I've always used uh, the hot press. I think the whites seem whiter. On a hot yeah, press. there's somehow. Also, there's a um, there are a couple different kinds of hot press. One might be a brighter finish. Is it you buy these as sheets, not as long? I usually yeah, I buy sheets. I usually buy 25 sheets at a time. This guy probably. This is a little more interesting. helps to um, sort of express the, the shape of him to the roundness. Let me see. I'm going to change that a little bit of um, cast shadow here under this. So don't want to have whites at the edge of the paper because it sort of draws your your eye off the painting. At some point, I'm gonna go back in here and darken part of this. I think it's dry enough. Even though it would be a long distance from where I had been sitting to this far away building, there's still probably some kind of different sunlight coming down on that. And it makes it a little more interesting if you do something to the shape rather than to just leave it flat. And, and there were even suggestions this far away of uh, chimneys and things like that. So I'm going to add some of that. Tiny little chimney there. These windows are going to be a lot smaller. I have a cast shadow on this. And then I think it's interesting to make something happen there to change it somehow. So at the top, it doesn't matter. It could be in the middle. It doesn't matter. It just do something to change the edge a little bit so it's not boring in the same. I have a chimney here, which I'll add a side to. So just so something else is going on there. I'm gonna Some of these posts in. 
And I want other colors, not just the same brown, because that's boring. I think this guy could be holding a stick. Use a smaller brush for some of these to give a difference of size. And as I get farther away, you know, up here, these could be smaller. So you see, I'm putting two there and then a, a different amount of space and then put another one so that they're not evenly spaced because it's so boring if you if you make a, a fence like it really looks. Mm -hmm. I think over here we could make something happen there because that's a, a deck. have a white shape here. The white shape sort of starts down here and it webs throughout the painting, goes up here, goes up here, and it's it's good to have things going on in that shape too. And I, ha I think I have this guy, this guy, all these other things along the edges of that white shape that make it more entertaining to look at. I don't know if there's really a uh, string down there or a rope at the beach, but I think it sort of makes it more interesting. I wanted to have a little bit more dark shape here, suggesting some beach grass. And I have that dark shape in my value sketch too. Yes, I do. I, I, I love to sit at the beach and paint. That's my you favorite. Do you usually take photographs? I, I do take photographs if I can't stay long enough. I mean, everything, it's not going to be definitely a, a warm, clear, sunny day. Sometimes you might get a thunderstorm. So if I were at the beach and, and I got bad weather, a photograph would come in very handy. But I try not to be a slave to the um, photograph. You have to change it. So does sand become part of your painting? Yes. I'm, I'm sure I probably have some paintings there in the in the bats in the in the bins over there that have uh, some sand on them.
Yeah, because I think it, it you know, there's a lot of um, the yellow color and the green color. And, is that uh, the room that you have? Yes, okay. I believe it is. I see, a problem I see with this is there's not as much difference between the, the foreground and the sky as I would like there to be. So I'm going to try to add, I'm going to dry this and I'm going to add a, a little darker value over that so it reads a little better. Sorry, I didn't understand what you said. You make the mother wash, and then if you want to write the tone or whatever, you add it to the yes. mother wash. Yes, yes, so yes. That, that is included in the color. Yeah. Would you repeat that question, please? Pardon? Would you repeat that question? She, I asked her if she made. No, oh, but she's supposed to hear it on the FBI. Okay, so. Um, She's asking about the mother wash. I'm just getting some more clips. So, yeah, I have um, my mother wash here had the quinacridone and the blue, and I've used that to modify some washes because if you start with that, you know then it sort of relates color-wise to um, the big wash in the sky. Okay, so this is already darker. This is sort of a darker blue. So. I'm going to darken this a little bit. And then you'll see that it reads. I can even add a little bit of blue there. This will only take a minute. There are times when I do a painting and look at it a day or two later and I say, I want to I want to change a wash a little bit and you could put the whole painting actually in a tub of water and just get it wet and then put your next wash on and it, it would not disturb the other washes at all you know if you have to start by wetting it okay now see I've got a darker wash on there and I think that reads better and I'll dry it too dry in the same amount of time really uh, maybe because I'm working on dry paper and it, uh, right now I'm looking by the way at this these washes and I would like a little bit different color this wash I think would look a little more interesting if I change it a tiny bit so I'm going to do that I'm going to make it purple because I said I was going to try and get some of that color in here sort of a, what do they call it, a triad, the yellow and the green and the purple. Is that a mixed purple or a certain purple? It's, it's a mixed purple with some of my mother wash, but what colors? I think I wrote it on here. Royal Amethyst oh. is what it's called. And I get my paints from Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. They're, um, they're house 
brand. And now I'm coming down to the bottom and I see an opportunity to leave a little something there, maybe a post, make it a little more interesting. So I think that's more colorful than what I had before. I can add some little windows. When this dries, I'm going to add another, a darker wash under the roof there. And those are just little something, rocks or something, to make an area more interesting. This is a little post that you can't see too well. You see there's a, a red post here. So the red post goes over the brown front of this building and you can't see it very well because they're close to the same value. So that's why I'm going back and making the top of that a little different. And it's just changing. You know, it's interesting to have things change along the way. There's, you could have a little shadow under there. It's hard sometimes to figure out the right consistency of when you can touch an area that's a little wet, so I'll dry it. have thicker paint, of course, then it's not going to run too sometimes. And grass might not really be blue, but it's a little more interesting. And, and then the value of it, of it is the most important thing, of course, because you can't see whatever color the grass is if it's against a, a background that's the same value. And this is a big brush, but if you use it on the side, you could have some fine lines too. Let's see. So you can make a pretty fine line with that. I have some thin lines up there. This I think I wish it were a little darker, so I'm going to change that. It's, it's, you know, layers, layers of paint. If you aren't thinking that the value is exactly what you want, you can just go back and add another layer on top of it. I lost this guy's arm a little bit. I, I like to add a few birds in the painting too. 
but when I put the birds, I'm not going to put them one, two, three. I usually put three birds because it's more interesting to have maybe one and two or two and one than equally spaced. So I'll try and uh, make them at a, an interesting relationship to each other. So I have one down there. Have one turn this way a little bit and then up there. Most of them. <laughs> Most of them. My my dad told me years ago. He said you should have some birds in the painting. So <laughs> I do that for him. And his art background was. <laughs> he was my biggest fan. He knew what he liked. Right? He was my biggest fan. He used to help me at a lot of art shows and all that. He's up in heaven now. Yes. So anyway, I guess that's about it. I'm going to sign it. Yes. Okay, any questions? Yeah, could you hold it up? Sure. Or is it wet? <laughs> thank you very much. You're welcome. Wonderful. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> and there's more of my work over there if anyone is curious. Oh, don't Everyone, worry. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> Just buy a lot of money and